Hey everyone, this is Cody, and today on Astro Blender, I'm going to be bringing you a quick review of the Astro Hutec IDAS NVZ Ultra High Speed Filter. Now, the reason this is going to be a quick review is I've already reviewed the original version of these filters, the NBX, as well as the updated version, the NBZ, which corrected for all the star halo problems. So this is just a uh, offshoot of the NBZ filter. The MBZ filter basically covers focal, fast focal ratios and slower focal ratios, and this is specifically designed for telescopes or lenses that are f1.8 through f2.8, so high speed application. That being said, let's go ahead and jump into it. So to give you a little background on this filter, the NBZ is Japanese made, and it started with the NBX, and that was a really good filter for pulling in a lot of hydrogen alpha and oxygen 3 data into your images, so a lot of emission data. The NBX though suffered from star halos, so they came out with the NBZ, which is this version, which takes care of a lot of those internal reflections and the stars are beautiful. Now I'm not going to say it takes care of all the internal reflections because that would be a very difficult task, but it's so good you can really not even notice that they're there. Then you have the IDAS NBZ Ultra High Speed, which is just an evolution of this filter. Now, the thing I love about the IDAS NBZ is it works really well at f2. Most filters see a lot of band shift and you don't pull in data well at high speed. This one, that does not happen. I can also use it in my 10 inch Mead Schmidt Newtonian here at f4, does just as good of a job, or in my Schmidt Cassegrain, can pop it in there and it pulls in the data just as well. It's really like magic. I don't know how they do it at different focal ratios and still pull in that data, but it does and it is an awesome filter. I cannot recommend the NBZ enough. So now you may ask yourself, is that slight increase in performance at high speed with this filter worth the money? Now, in my opinion, if, you're, if you have multiple telescopes at various focal ratios, I would still buy the normal NBZ because the NBZ works fantastic at high speed. It works great at slower speeds. It's just a fantastic filter all around. That's why it's no doubt my favorite dual narrowband filter. However, if you're only going to be imaging at high speed, and you know that, that's the only thing you're going to be doing, you might as well get this one for a slight in, uh, performance increase. The other thing is because this filter is pretty niche, um, it is actually cheaper than the normal NBZ. So if, if you know for a fact that high speed is the only thing you're going to be doing, you may want to go with the uh, NBZ UHS. Okay, so let's go ahead and evaluate the IDAS NBZ UHS by taking a look at a few of the images I've taken with this filter. So this is the Western Veil vale Nebula. It was a five minute single exposure here taken through my RASA 8. And really what I was aiming for in this five minute exposure was to see if I could produce any star halos because five minutes in an F2 system is quite a long time. So if I zoom in here on this bright star 52 Cygni, you do not see any halos at all, which which is nice. Now, this is just a single exposure. So what happens when we look at a stacked image? Well, if I zoom in here on my stacked final image, you can see that again, there's no halo around 52 Cygni. Now, this is a, a pretty bright star. I have seen halos on it in the past through lots of different filters. So that's a positive right there for the uh, NBZ UHS. Okay, let's evaluate this filter for star halos at a little larger scale. So this is the Horsehead Nebula, which contains the star Almatok, almost right next to it in the, uh, the field of view here. And this star, this is found in the constellation of Orion. And this is one of the brightest stars that people will get in their images. It's, it's very, very bright. And again, notice here in a single image, if I zoom in here, you don't even see the beginnings of a halo. So this filter is amazing because an F2, 180 second exposure, that's a long time and you don't see any traces of haloing at all. Now let's compare that to the original version of this filter, the IDAS NBX. And you can see there is halos in the original version, quite drastic halos, right? So this updated version or the NBZ, I should say, and the NBZ UHS shown here, have done a remarkable job at removing those star halos and making this look nice. Now, if we look at the stacked version, the other thing I want to point out here is just how much the hydrogen alpha data is coming through at F2. I barely processed this for noise. I did not adjust the curves whatsoever. This is a natural look at how much hydrogen alpha came through this filter. I was pretty shocked when I stacked this in Astro Pixel processor that this is how much color 
came out. And if you look at that star again on the talk, I zoom in on it, it looks absolutely perfect. In fact, those diffraction patterns look really beautiful. That star shining really brightly there. You have that ton of nebulosity coming through and this just looks phenomenal. So again, this is just more evidence why the NBZ is my favorite dual narrowband filter and the NBZ UHS just does an amazing job here, especially in this region. It's just very, very rich. Now I wanted to highlight the contrast that this filter provides by taking an image here of the Orion Nebula. And if you look between the Running Man Nebula and the actual Orion Nebula itself, you'll see these wispy hydrogen gas clouds. And there is a lot of detail in there. Nice contrast between background and stars and just really good detail in the, in the wispiness there. Now, you might be saying this image is pretty overexposed and you would be right, that core is blown out. But if you spend any amount of time on Orion, you are gonna blow out the core. And a lot of astrophotographers will mask in those core details. But I actually find this to be a more realistic take because I'm not mixing and matching exposures. It's just one one exposure, kind of like what you would what you would do normally with a scientific image. The other thing about this is you'll notice it's predominantly red. This filter really lets in the hydrogen alpha data very well, and that oxygen three data you can see in the the Running Man Nebula. So just excellent transmission through the filter at high speed, which is what this one is designed for. Great contrast, great looking stars, and yeah, I mean, hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe by far. So that previous image you saw of the Horsehead Nebula, this one, they're predominantly red, and that's basically how it should be. Now finally, I wanted to test this filter just to see how well it transmits the hydrogen alpha and doubly ionized oxygen bands at high speed, which is what it's advertised to do. So I slewed my telescope over to Pickering's Triangle here, which is a portion of the Veil Supernova Remnant, which is one of my favorite areas of the night sky. This looks like a beautiful rose here. And I decided to use five minute exposures, again using the Celestron Rasa 8 at F2, all night long. And look what came out. Look at the saturation of that hydrogen alpha. It is coming right through. The oxygen is coming right through. It is very, very saturated. It's popping right out. So transmission of this filter, F2, excellent. It just looks great. Now, normally when you're using a narrowband filter, like a hydrogen alpha filter, the stars are pretty reduced. And you can see here, five minutes, it's a lot of signal. You are getting just, overwhelmed here this image is just popping so maybe a little bit too long on this target but it really fulfilled my test <laughs> the light is coming in and there is no shortage of it it is very saturated so again this filter does a great job reducing halos or not even reducing they're non-existent the hydrogen alpha the oxygen three bands come right through as they're supposed to and contrast wise images look great all right, everyone, well, that wraps up this review of the IDAS NBZ UHS. So if you're looking at picking up a high-speed telescope, F1.8 to F2.8, you definitely want to consider this. If you're like me and you have multiple telescopes, the IDAS NBZ still is the winner here, and that's why I have two different versions of this filter. I absolutely love it. Without a doubt, it's my favorite filter I own. So I'd highly recommend checking out my IDAS NBX and NBZ reviews for all the detail and data that I put together. and. As always, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and clear skies.